it has been a couple days since Next.js 15 release candidate 2, RC2 is out and there are quite a few exciting changes and I think it is very, very, very close to getting officially released with Next.js Conf around the corner. So in this specific video, we're going to walk through all the changes that are coming up, that are released in Release Candidate 2, that will probably make it to the official version and things we need to be aware of as well. So let's dive in. We are on the official website of Next.js and if you head over to blog, you will see Next.js 15 RC2. I will also link it in the description below if you want to check it out. Now this specific page covers everything that you need to know about Next.js 15 RC2 that is Release Candidate 2. It has all the changes and improvements and they have worked on feedback that the community has given and so on. So let's look into it one by one. But first off, shout out to everyone that has contributed to this specific version. It always takes a village to put together a version. There's a lot that goes on behind the scenes. So shout out to folks who worked on it. All right. So let's walk, walk through these changes one by one. So the first one is that there is a next code mod upgrade. So definitely make sure to check it out to upgrade your app to this specific version. They have offered a code mod that is automated code transformation, which will allow you to migrate to the specific version easily. Then we have TurboPack for web development. Now TurboPack for local development will become stable. And if you don't know what TurboPack is, it is a incremental bundler and build system optimized for JavaScript and TypeScript and it written in Rust. So whenever we build our files, if we switch to TurboPack, it is going to be really fast. You can start running it today. See how fast your development environment becomes after that. Now, a few things I want to note is 25 to 35 reduction in memory usage and 30 to 50 faster co compilation for large pages with thousands of modules. So we should definitely see a difference. If you take a look at this specific link, it's pretty cool. Are we Turbo yet? Not yet, but they are very, very close with 96% <coughs> with 96% of next build tests are passing through. So definitely keep an eye on this specific. The next change is the async request API, and this is a breaking change. Now this one, you definitely need to be careful of because they have made cookies and specific APIs such as cookies, headers, draft mode, params, generate metadata, generate viewport, search params, all of these things, they have made it asynchronous. That means you need to await it and then get the value from the cookie. Now, now if you are using cookies in your application or any of these, your code might not work because you are not awaiting it. So you won't necessarily get the cookie store value. Similarly, generate metadata is a function that's used for generating the SEO for your pages. You can use generate metadata for generating dynamic pages for your site. And that being broken would mean that it would have a significant impact on your SEO. So definitely make sure that you take a look at this before you upgrade it. So this is definitely a breaking change. And the reason for the change is that the server waits for a request before rendering any content. However, not all components depend on request specific data. So it's unnecessary to wait for the request to render them. So ideally the server will prepare as much as possible before a request arrives and we can enable this and set the stage for future optimizations. We need to know when to wait for the request. And that is why they have essentially added it and decided to make it. A the next one are our favorite server actions. Now, server actions are server side functions that can be called from the client. And we typically use use server directive at the top of a file and we export an async function. Now, if you were to go to my YouTube channel, I created a video on this topic that you might be leaking data accidentally with server actions. I'm glad that they are doing something towards making it better. And the reason I created that video is because not a lot of people are aware that server actions are basically publicly accessible HTTP endpoint. So if you have a server action and you start expo exporting it, which you should because they are functions, then they, it's still a publicly accessible HTTP endpoints and people were not taking the same precautions as they would for APIs. Now, with this specific version, with the RC215 version, if there are any server actions that won't have their IDs exposed to client-side JavaScript, in this specific version, the unused server actions will not have their IDs exposed to client-side JavaScript, which means that 
those specific functions are considered dead code and they won't be included along with the bundle, which reduces the bundle size and improves performance. So that's one good thing. The other one is this one, which is my favorite, which is that Next.js now creates unguessable, non-deterministic IDs to allow the client to reference and call the server action. Now, these IDs are also periodically recalculated between bills for enhanced security. This means that it's very hard for you to guess what's that public endpoint for your specific server action and to make that request. So I'm glad that this is a change that the Next.js team has done but make sure that you, st you should still treat server actions like any public HTTP endpoints. That means anyone can access it. That means you need to protect it and take additional precautions. But anyway, if you're interested, then definitely check out this specific video on that topic. Then we have next form. Now, I know I skipped one, but I'm really excited for this one. Next.js has exposed a new form component, a similar to image component and several others in the framework. The Next.js form component also extends the browser HTML form element, but it has additional capabilities such as prefetching, client-side navigation, and progressive enhancement. So we can start using this for forms because it's useful for forms that navigate to a new page, such as a search form that leads to a results page. So for example, in this case, instead of using your browser form element, you could use the form component from Next.js and this is why it's useful. First of all, prefetching. So the layout and loading UI are prefetched. So this will make your navigation really fast for client-side navigation. So on submission of your form, any shared layout and client-side state are preserved. So it's not gonna reload the whole thing. It's gonna try to preserve as much as possible and progressive enhancement. So if your JavaScript hasn't loaded yet, the form will still work via a full page navigation, which is pretty awesome. Now you can learn more about the form component here, but also we could take a look at how the form component works. For example, this, this is all the code that we would add, but we don't need to do a lot of that anymore. Now I'll create a separate video on this specific topic, but definitely a good step in the right direction. Now, the landscape of next year is huge with so many newer changes coming up all the time. Server and client components are just the tip of the iceberg. There are so many more changes that are coming up in the later versions. And which is why I want, I'm creating a course on the ultimate next year's course. I want this course to be the end all be all for next year's content and it will truly allow you to build production ready apps to take your web development skills to the next level. Because now I think that all developers need to be full stack developers and not just front end developers. After using a framework like Next.js, it will make you more powerful. Now, I am very close to launching this specific course. So if you're interested, then definitely join the course waitlist. I've shared a couple of exciting things through the waitlist ex exclusively but I have more coming out that I'm going to share, including discounts and whatnot as well. So definitely sign up to the waitlist if you are truly interested in leveling up your Next.js skills. Next, config TS file. Now TypeScript support for the Next.js configuration file. So Next.js now supports Next config file type and provides a Next config type for autocomplete and type safe options, which is pretty awesome. So you can learn about the TypeScript support there. And the one, other one that we really missed was the static route indicator. So if you have any routes that are static or dynamic, there will be a visual cue to make it easier to optimize its performance. So you know how pages are rendered. Sometimes accidentally, if you don't know what your rendering strategy is, you might not statically render something which can cost you performance and it might make your site really slow. So definitely this is pretty cool. Then we have instrumentation JS. Now this one is the other one I'm really excited about in Next.js. Now Next.js has collaborated with Sentry. And if you don't know what Sentry is, it really allows you to monitor your performance. I have used Sentry a lot in the past, so you can add logging and really try to understand what's going on in your application in production. So I'm really glad that the Next.js team has collaborated with Sentry on designing a new on request error hook that can be used to capture important context about errors thrown on the server. Now, Next.js overall is making really good progress towards 
adding more logging, making hydration errors more obvious that they did in Next.js 14. So I'm really glad this is a step in the right direction. The instrumentation file with register API will allow users to tap into the Next.js server cycle to monitor performance, track the source of errors, deeply integrate with libraries like open telemetry and so on. This feature is now stable and this specific experimental.instrumentation hook config option can be removed. But if you really want to report errors and really try to figure out what's going on in your application, you want to use this specific hook on request error, which will give you more observability in general. And you can basically initial, initialize any sort of provider that you want here as well. Now let's move on to self-hosting. Now with improvements made in self-hosting, this is pretty awesome because when you are self-hosting, you need more control over cache control directives. By deploying things on specific platforms, you get additional capabilities like we do on Vercel. Now, one common case is controlling the stale while revalidate period sent, sent for incremental static regenerated pages. So any pages that every few seconds get the dynamic data, we wanna control the stale while revalidate period, which means what should happen when the pages are stale and so on. So there are two improvements that have been made. They, we can configure the expire time value in next config. So this was previously in the experimental option and we have updated the default value to one year, ensuring most CDNs can fully apply the stale while revalidate semantics as intended. So now you can, you can also no longer override custom cache control values with our default values, allowing full control. Now again, we get granular caching controls like this one, which really is awesome because that will allow us to self-host where we like. Now, having said this, with initiatives like Open Next, which you should definitely check out, this is pretty awesome because now that Cloudflare has also joined the effort to make Next fully open, with Open Next initiative, this option is definitely in the right direction that allows people to self-host in general as well. I would also say that Lee Rob has created a really cool video on how you can deploy Next.js, Postgres, and Nginx to a $4 VPS with Docker that I would also ask you to check out because that's a really good video. Then we have the ESLint 9 support. Now, if you don't know ESLint 9, you can definitely check out the release docs here. But the biggest one that you should definitely make sure that you are following is this specific flag. Now, if you upgrade to ESLint 9, and they, there's a new format with ESLint 9. Now the file ESLint RC is no longer there. So the ESLint CLI will search for this specific file, which is eslint.config.js by default, instead of this specific file. If the file is not found, the CLI will consider this as an error. So this is a really big one. So adding this flag to false will allow you to still use ESLint RC if you're not ready to upgrade. That is definitely a change that Next.js has adopted and they have mentioned it here, which is pretty cool. You can also take a look at the migration guide here for how you can upgrade to ESLint 9 because there are also changes to the latest version of Node and so on, the stable version of Node and so on as well. Now, lastly, let's also take a look at the breaking changes. Now, I know this specific blog post covers a lot about all the exciting changes. We did talk about some of the breaking changes earlier, but definitely make sure that you check out this one as well. For instance, if you're using this specific value, runtime experimental edge in the app router, that has now changed to runtime edge. Calling revalidate tag and revalidate path during render will throw an error. And you can take a look at this specific PR for that reason. So if we call it during a render, it will throw an error, for instance. The other one is the minimum Node.js version has been updated to 18.18.0. A deprecated suspense prof has been removed. So if you're using it from Next Dynamic, then don't use it anymore. And when the component is used in app router, it won't insert a empty suspense boundary anymore. And this is the other big one, which is that disallow using SSR false option with Next Dynamic in server components. There are a bunch of different improvements that have been made in this specific version as well that you should check out too. All right, having said that, that's a wrap on the Next.js video. 
If you like content like this and want me to cover more Next.js content, please comment below and let me know what is something that's still confusing for you about Next.js and I will create a video on that specific topic. All right, thanks for watching.